Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be solving the leak code question, Stone Game 4. Alright, so I think I solved the previous version of this question, but yeah, let's take a quick look at this question. Alright, so we have two people, Alice and Bob, and they both take turns playing a game, while Alice starting first, okay, so Alice always starts first. Initially, there are n stones in a sorry, okay. Initially, there are n stones in a pile. On each player's turn, that player makes a move consisting of removing any non-zero square numbers of stones in piles. Okay, so real quickly, what a square number is, it's basically a perfect square. So for example, the number is 4, 9. So when you find a square of 9 or 4, you get 2 and 3 respectively, which are both um, whole integer values, okay? So that's what a square number is, and yeah. Okay, so also, if a player cannot make a move, the person ends up losing the game, okay? So yeah, so given a positive integer n, return true if and only if Alice wins the game. And if Alice loses the game and Bob wins, we return false. And we're going to be assuming that both of the players play optimally. Before we actually go into a little bit more complicated examples, let's look at the very basic simple examples. So over here we have a n value of 1. And like it said earlier, Alice is always going to start first. So in this case we have one stone. And now what is going to be happening is basically Alice has to play. There's no other option for Alice. So Alice has one option, which is to remove one stone from the pile. And now the pile ends up with zero stones. So in this case, when there's zero stones, there's nothing Bob can do. And Bob loses. So when Bob loses and Alice wins, we're going to end up returning true, which is exactly what happens. Let's look at example number two, where n is equal to two. So what happens here is Alice has to play. And what are her options? Can she remove two stones? And the answer is no, because the square root of two is not uh, going to be an integer. Two is not a perfect square. So in this case, what is going to happen is Alice has to remove one stone. And the reason we're using the number one is because one is a perfect square. One squared one equals to one. Okay, so uh, in this case, we're going to remove one stone. Now we have one stone left and it's Bob's turn. So now Bob is also going to remove one turn. Now when it comes to Alice's turn, we end up with zero stones in the pile. And when we have zero stones, Alice loses. Hence, we're going to say false. All right, so now let's get into a little bit more complicated example, which is n equals 4. So now let's get into the next example, n equals 4. And in this case, pretty simple, 4 is a perfect square. Square root of 4 is equal to 2, and 2 uh, into 2 or 2 squared is equal to 4. So in that case, Alice can just directly take out four square, uh, sorry, four stones, and she wins the game. So true. Uh, and over here, since the numbers get a little bit bigger, like seven and seventeen, there are more options that we're dealing with, right? So in order to kind of represent this, we're going to be using a tree-based data structure in order to represent different turns and what are the possible options a person can use. So let's just real quickly. I'll just go through this step by step. Okay, and over here. We're starting off, uh, let's just say we're starting off with uh, seven stones, okay? So over here at the very top, our pile has seven stones. Actually, before I even go into our tree over here, we want to understand how do we get the perfect square values? And that's pretty simple. So to get the perfect squares, all we're going to be doing, and again, remember it says non-zero, okay? So uh, yeah, so non-zero square numbers, okay? So we're going to start off at the value one. So we're going to do one squared gives us a value of one. Then we're going to do 2, 2 squared giving us a value of 4, then 3 squared giving us 9, 4 squared 16, 5 squared 25, so on and so forth. So hopefully you get the point and it goes up to 36 and it keeps going, right? So this over here are going to be the perfect squares and that's how we're going to be getting those values, okay? All right, so perfect. So over here we have the number 7. Uh, that's the number of stones we're starting off with inside of our pile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using two different colors. So I'll be using the color red to represent when it's Alice's turn. And remember, Alice always plays first. So in this case, what are the options for Alice? Mm -hmm. And Alice over here has two options, which is she can either uh, put one stone or four stones, but she could not put, put nine stones. And the reason for that is because nine is a lot bigger, right? We're gonna end up with negative stones in our pile, which obviously makes no sense. So in this case, one or four, and why not the other numbers? Because, well, they're not perfect squares. So let's just look at those two options. So let's draw them out. So this represents when we remove one stone, and this represents when we remove four stones. So what is going to be our values when that happens? So when we remove one stone, we end up with six stones, and when we remove four stones, we end up with three stones, okay? 
Perfect, so now we just keep going on. And to represent Bob's turn, I'll be using the color green. So at six, we again have two options, which are the same. We either can remove one stone or he can remove four stones. And for three, we have one option only, which is he can remove one stone, okay? So now let's go back to white and over here, if you remove one stone, we end up with two stones. If you remove four stones, we end up with two stones again. And if you remove one stone, we end up with five stones. Perfect. Five, two, two, and no one has won yet. All right, so now let's change up our color for the last. So now let's change up to Alice's turn, which is the color of red. And over here, let's just look at the options. So when we're at two, uh, the only thing that she can do is remove one stone. So in both of these cases, she ends up removing one stone. And at five, again, she has two options. Either one stone or four stones can be removed. Uh, so I'll just go through this a little bit more faster. So we end up with one stone, one stone. Over here, we end up with the uh, one stone since we're removing four. And over here, we end up with four stones, okay? And now it's going to be a green's turn, which is Bob. So in this case, Bob is going to put one stone uh, over here as well. One stone, one stone. And over here, he's going to have two options between one and four. So now we're going to look at uh, in what cases does he actually end up winning. So over here, we're going to end up with zero stones. Over here, we're also going to have zero stones, zero stones again. And this is also going to give us zero stones. This gives us three stones. Okay, so every time where we get the value zero, what exactly is happening? So what that's telling us is Bob is taking away the last or the last few stones that are available. And when he's doing that, Every time we have a zero here, Bob is winning. So Bob wins here. I'll just try to B for wherever he wins. So Bob wins there and here and here as well. But he does not win here yet, I think. So let's just uh, continue on because we're going to go all the way up to the ending. So now it's going to be Alice's turn. Alice can either. She only has one option, which is to play one. So let's just go through this a little faster. So uh, now we have two possibilities. Then in this case, now it's going to be Green's turn. Green is going to take out one. And then after that, we're going to end up with one. And then after that, red is going to end up taking one. So red takes up one. And when red takes up one, in this case, Alice actually ends up winning, okay? So Alice is going to be the winner over here. Okay, so real quickly, what exactly was the purpose of doing all of this? So what's basically happening when we're doing this is we're looking at each and every possibility which could possibly happen. So let's say in the beginning, it's Alice's turn. She has two possibilities, either remove one or remove four stones, right? So that's what's happening, right? So each time we're looking at every possible solution. So even over here, right? So you could either remove one stone or four stones, right? So that's exactly what we're doing at each of the possible steps. So one thing that we want to clean up or kind of clear up is the fact that each player is always going to play optimally. So that over there is really important. So in, uh, for example, what that means is in the beginning, uh, Alice has two options, remove four stones or one stone. So if she removes four stones, she is going to end up losing. But if she remove one, uh, removes one stone, there is a chance of winning. But that over there is also not possible because once, let's say we get to this point over here, uh, the choice for Bob is to either remove one stone or four stone. And Bob is always going to play to win. So we can, you know what, we could actually completely remove this itself because Bob is always going to play the step which is going to lead him to win. He's not going to play one. He is going to play four no matter what. So that's one thing we're trying to understand that they're always going to play to win. So in this case, it's pretty evident that no matter where you go, Bob is the one who comes out victorious, right? Bob is always going to end up winning. Uh, the answer to this is, should be pretty obvious. It's going to end up being false, okay? So that's what's going to happen. But now the question is, how exactly are we going to get to the answer of fault? So to do that, we're going to be uh, basically using recursion. And it makes sense to use recursion because over here, the pile has a length of seven. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at all the possibilities. So in this case, the possibilities are either to remove one or four. So now let's say we're removing one. Our new stack of pile would now have six. And at six, our possibilities are either one and four. And like that, we keep going down the tree. But how do we know whether the answer is true or false? So to do that, let's just assume that we go all the way down. So currently, we're going to be over here. And what's going to happen is whenever we encounter a zero, we're going to return false. So basically, what's happening is over here, we're saying we have false, okay? We say false over here. 
So since each time at each of the roots per se, so four, five, six, seven, we're calling the function recursively on itself. And each time what's gonna happen is four, since its very ending over here had a answer of false, four, the one, the root of it, so one above, a layer above, is going to have the opposite value, which is true. And the reason that we're doing this is because each time the players are gonna alternate in terms of turns. So in this first, we have Alice, then Bob, and so on and so forth. So uh, it should make sense as we go up, as we keep going higher. So in this case, we're going to go to five. And in this case, we're going to have false and then true. And then, yeah, let's just stop over there. And uh, if you want to keep trying it over here, so this actually starts at false, true, false, and true again. False, true, false, true again. So if you do it over here as well, we start off with false, then true, then false, and then true. And since six and three both have a value of true, now what's going to happen is when we go up to seven, what that is telling us is that we're always taking the opposite, right? So now this is gonna have a value of false. And that makes sense because when Alice is not winning, we are going to have a value of false. And that's exactly what's happening. So I know this is a little bit confusing. So I just wanna show one more example. Instead of seven, uh, I'm gonna show you how it looks like for eight and let's just go to the very ending of it. All right, so this is how the tree is gonna look like for when we are going with the number of our when our pile starts off with eight stones, okay? So this is what it's gonna look like. And each of the numbers over here represents the number of stones that are left in the pile. So if you see, uh, the first uh, move is always Alice's. So this is Alice's move. And in this move, if she ends up removing four uh, stones, Bob is going to win no matter what. But if she does not remove four stones, no matter what happens, Alice is going to win. So look at this, Alice wins here, 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 and here. So, and again, remember, they are playing optimally. So in this case, uh, let's just say, let's do the same steps we did. So false, then this will be true, false, true, false. And everything, no matter where you come from, this uh, seven starts, uh, it's gonna have a value of false. So let's say this one over here, false, true, false, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, okay? So seven over here is gonna be false. But in this case, again, we're gonna have false over here since that's equal to zero. And this over here would be true. And that makes sense, right? So over here we're saying that Bob wins. So if you go up, that would be false. So over here, what we're going to be doing is if we have, uh, so in this case, if everything is false, right? Then in that case, we're going to end up returning true. And that is exactly what we're going to do. So in this case, we're actually going to have a value of true. And the reason that we're having a value of true is because Alice wins. And we have to consider that Alice is always playing optimally. So she's never going to end up choosing this move. She would never choose that move because she wants to play to win. So she's always going to end up choosing the move that makes her win. Simultaneously, the other guy is also going to be just do doing the same thing. He's also going to always be playing to win. So in this case, Alice is always going to go to the left. So in that case, we have false here and then we actually end up with being true over here. So, all right, so over here, uh, we're going to be using a cache, like I said earlier. And uh, in Python, there's this library called func tools or function tools, and it's in built into Python. And from that, we can use the LRU cache. So let's just call that and it's gonna be a decorator. So LRU underscore cache, okay? And we're gonna give it none. And the none over here refers to the max size. So in this case, we're gonna define that as none. Okay, so over here, okay, and one more thing, uh, you could build your own cache using a dictionary, but I'm just gonna use the inbuilt one for Python. Okay, so over here, we're gonna go inside of a for loop. And what is this for loop gonna start from? So I'll just call it for x in range, and we're gonna start off at the number one, okay? So the reason we're starting off at one and not two. zero is because, well, like I said earlier, we're going to have a non-zero square numbers. Okay, and basically all we're doing inside of this is we're gonna be looking at all of the possibilities. So in simple words, let's say right now it's Alice's turn. By going inside of this, we're gonna be getting the number one, four, and nine. And in other words, another way to look at one, four, and nine is let's look at the square roots, right? So the square root of one is one. The square root of four is two, and this is three over here, right? So we're over here, we're getting one squared, two squared and three squared and getting that is a lot easier and we also went over this in the very beginning of our video okay so in order to get that what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root and to do that we're going to use the inbuilt uh, library called math so math dot square root and we're going to be taking the square root of the number n so we'll be taking the square root of n 
and we're going to be adding one to it. And the reason that we're adding one to it is because we want to also include the number itself. And before we actually go through this, this number might be a decimal value. So we want it to be an integer. And in order to do that, we can just round it or we can just convert it into an integer or we can just use math.floor. Okay. And the reason we're adding one is because uh, when you use the range, we go up to a certain number, but not including it. So by adding one, we're going to include this number itself as well. Okay. So that's what we're doing inside of here. And over here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to recursively call our function over here. So let's just call this function. So self dot, what is this? Let's just copy. It's pretty long. So winner square game. So copy that over, paste it. And over here, the question is, what is the number that we're going to be giving inside of our function over here? Now, the number that we're actually going to be calling inside of our function here is going to be the current uh, number we have, which is n. And we're going to subtract that with this x value over here. But what exactly is the x value? And remember, the x value is the perfect square of the numbers that we uh, could be a possible uh, answer or possibility for one of our plays. So in this case, uh, x, right? So we need to find x squared. So to do that, we can just do x multiplied by x, pretty simple. And again, x squared, because like I said earlier, this represents 1, 2, and 3. So 3 squared equals 9, 2 squared equals 4. Okay, sorry. So we have our recursive calls, but this is going to keep going and we need to find some sort of stopping point. And we already discussed how we're going to do this. So let's just do that real quickly. So if n over here is equal to 0, then in that case, we're going to end up returning false. Okay, but uh, I'll just write it down first and then I will explain it one last time, okay? So if not self dot winner square game, then in that case, we're actually going to end up returning true directly. But if uh, it is true, right? So if self dot winner square game for this value over here is true, then in that case, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to continue. And outside of the for loop, after trying out all of the possibilities, then in that case, we're going to end up returning false. Okay, so now let's actually talk about what is happening, what this means, and uh, let's just go into more detail. So let's just go back to the drawings that we had over here. And in this case, what is happening is we actually end up with everything over here giving us a value of false, right? So 7 over here has a value of false. And when you go up one step, this over here is going to end up being true. So in that case, what's going to happen, we're directly going to return true and we're done. And that makes sense because that's basically telling us that Alice can win because at this point she has two different options and she's obviously going to choose the more optimized one. Okay, so uh, just for the sake of explaining uh, what's happening when you go down on the left is we're removing one. Okay, so minus one and we're going to the right, we're removing four. So obviously we're first going to remove one, right, since we're going from zero to the higher values. So let's say we're doing that and in that case this all makes sense. But just for the sake of explaining, Let's say that we actually first go to this uh, tree or this value over here. We end up removing four. But now what happens when you end up removing four, we get a value of true at four over here, right? And that's basically telling us that Bob is winning. So if you go up one step, this true becomes false. And that tells us that Bob ends up winning. And in that case, what's going to happen? We're not going to return anything. So in that case, we're actually going to go over to the next possible value, which in this case is one. And in this case, we actually have a value of false, so we can directly return true. And that's exactly what we're doing. So we keep going through all the possibilities, and let's say everything actually ends up returning false. And if everything ends up returning false, then in that case, we don't return this true at all. We don't go inside of the if loop. And at the very ending, we're going to end up returning the false that we have over here. All right, so hopefully all of that did make sense. And if you submit this, our answer should get accepted. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.